Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Sorry if you hear barking and hummingbirds and all kinds of stuff. I live up in the mountains and I think there's some like, maybe some coyotes out there that's kind of driving uh, my neighbor's dogs crazy. So if you hear that in the background, my bad. So this is gonna be kind of be the first part of the series where I'm talking about specifically my truck, what I have on it, why I have on it, and kind of show you how to do it yourself. This is gonna be on everything you see back here, which has been asked about more than anything. So it's kind of my favorite part of the truck as well. So I'm just gonna get into it. This video is gonna be kind of a short abbreviated version of it. I wanted to do a video that was very detailed that showed you how I drilled and where I put that and why I mounted it like that. Uh, and that video I'm gonna make probably right now, but I'm gonna post it as two separate videos. So for those of you that just kinda want the brief overview of this, that's this video. For those of you that want everything, like what size bolt you use there, uh, probably uploading that video in about a week. So get subscribed, hit that notification icon if you want. One other thing I did wanna mention, that so the foundation, literally the foundation of this whole system is the uh, Diamondback truck cover, which if you've followed me for a while, you know I'm a big fan of it, not just for overlanding. I've kind of adopted it for overlanding use, but I'm just a fan of it for secure storage in my truck bed, so guns or whatever I leave back there if I go for training or something like that. So I'm a fan of it. I've been a fan of the Diamondback cover for a long time. And over the years, I've like adapted it. And I've said, how can I make this work for me? How can I make it work with this system, with all this cool stuff? So I'm gonna be showing you that. Oh, but what I wanted to talk about is Diamondback covers. They never run sales and they don't have coupon codes or anything like that. But I've been working with them. I've been pleading with them to give you guys a, a code because I get people that ask all the time. They're like, oh, it's a little bit out of my price range. Is there, is there like a discount? Is there anything you can do? Um, it's, nothing is confirmed yet. But by the time I launch the other full video of this in about a week, I will have details in what I think tentatively is gonna happen and keep this on the down low maybe because they really only wanted it to be for my subscribers. They're gonna give me a discount code or a discount link or something that's gonna be temporary. It's gonna be for like 72 hours or over the weekend or something. Um, so I will give you full details when I know in the next video. So yeah, get subscribed, get hit that notification icon. You don't wanna miss that. If you've been thinking about getting a Diamondback tr truck cover, it's gonna be the only way through me that you're gonna be able to get it on sale. Uh, so yeah, now let's just get into it. So what you see back here, I'm gonna just briefly talk about what it is, and why it exists and kind of like a brief maybe how it's mounted. But again, I'm gonna be doing a video that gets much more detailed there. So the first thing you'll see on the side here is this big green thing, what is that? This one specifically is called a Max Trax. There's a lot of other ones out there that do similar things, but what this basically is is a traction device. Back in the day when I first kind of started wheeling, these things didn't exist. So we sometimes brought like carpet remnants with us. Sometimes we just threw our uh, like floor mats underneath the tire or just got a bunch of branches and sticks. The idea is when your tires in mud or sand or whatever or snow, it's spinning and it's not getting traction. And the only way to give it traction is, well, you can't really. It, it's the easiest way is to shove stuff underneath it. Uh, and all those things I mentioned don't work great, but this does. So it's gonna be the easiest way to get you unstuck out of most of the situations that get you stuck in the first place. So you're gonna want these mounted externally somewhere that you can get to them because A, you don't wanna be digging, rummaging in all your stuff when you're stuck in the mud. It's just, it's a nightmare. So you want them out somewhere like this. The second thing is they're probably getting you out of a sticky or not very sticky, slippery situation, in which case they're gonna get dirty. So after you're done with them, you're gonna to wanna to put them exterior so they're not in there getting your sleeping bags all messed up and stuff. So these are mounted for me externally like this. Uh, vertically because I think they look kind of cool and we all know it's all about the looks, right? Uh, but also easy access. So they have these pins, which I'll talk about more in the future. They are lockable. So I do have this little lock on here to keep them there. So that's the max track. So let's just kind of go around here uh, and talk about pieces as we get to them. So what you'll also see up here is a Pelican case. Uh, I'm not usually transporting guns in it when I'm going camping, unless I'm really doing like a gun related thing, then I can toss guns in here. But you can just, you can put anything that you can fit in a Pelican case. So you can 
maybe you put your drone gear in here, maybe you put your cooking gear, maybe you put your tent or some chairs or whatever. You can just put anything that fits in a Pelican. This is a rifle case. This is a 1750. Now I designed this whole system to work that would allow me to put Pelican cases underneath it because I had two of these already. Uh, so I was like, I measured it, I knew how high I needed to go to clear it, and I made sure my crossbars cleared that. So these crossbars, you can kind of see, this is the standard crossbar mount here. This will get you, I don't know, about four inches or so, four or five inches. Uh, but this, I needed about seven inches clearance to clear this puppy. So I added these uh, aluminum square tubing basically as risers. So now this whole system can clear my Pelican case. I'll get into exactly how my Pelican case is mounted and I'll get into exactly how I raised the racks and how I connected them to the Diamondback cover in the next longer video. But basically just in a nutshell, that's what's going on. You don't need to put a pelican on here. You can put uh, those tubs that fit under the bed. You could put those under here. You could put your chairs. You could put your cornhole set. You could do any number of things in this space. But how it came about was I had a diamondback set up with a rack system previously that just had about three inches of space. And as I was out camping and stuff, I would use that. I would tuck something in here. I'd put a speaker in there. I'd put my shoes in there or whatever. And I would use that space. And I'm like, man, I wish this space was a little bit bigger so I could actually use it to transport extra gear. So I have the whole bed available and then I have the tent on top, but then I have this whole other thin layer here to put other stuff. And again, I'll get into specifically how this is mounted. It's a pretty slick setup that I spent a lot of time thinking about to think what's the easiest way to get it on and off, but have it be secure. Also, I can lock it. I can padlock this to this as well if you're worried about security. And then we'll come over to this side. So this side I have a high lift jack. As I mentioned in my other video, this is a brand new high lift jack. I had an old one that I uh, gave to a friend that just started, that just bought an older Forerunner and wanted to come with us. And I said, hey, I got this old high, I got this old high lift jack that I had on my Land Rover Discovery years ago. It's just kind of been collecting rust. I want a new one. So I'll sell that to you and I'll get myself a new one. So this thing is brand new. I've never even used this specific high lift. I've used high lifts in the, in the past. This is mounted in a super sick, clever way. As you can see, it's very low profile to the truck. So it's not sticking out, it's not protruding, but it's also incredibly easy access to get to. It's not up here on my roof racks where I'm having to drop it on my face. It's right at a very good height to mount it and take it off. This is mounted. I didn't even have to drill any holes in the cover to mount this. I use these existing things here. These little guys had holes drilled already. Um, and these are like lashing points for whatever you want to do. I took one of these bolts out, put a longer bolt through, boop, boop, boop. And I have four of these. One over here has a 13 millimeter nut on it to prevent, you know, if I go into a store or something, make it a little bit harder. I can lock this whole system on with like a bike lock. I bought like a cable lock to lock everything up if I need to. But this stuff and the tent and all this stuff isn't on my truck 24 seven. I situationally put this stuff on when I'm going somewhere that I need it. So this is pretty heavy. This is pretty heavy and bulky and I'm not driving around trying to look cool at the mall or anything like that. This is all functional stuff. So I want it to be easily mountable and easily taken off. So I actually have a pulley system for my rooftop tent that I could just drop it on and off in a couple of minutes. This goes on very easily and when I take it off, it's like there's nothing there. So I'll get into that system again, the mounting and dismounting and everything in the longer video, but I just wanted to give you a quick brief look at it. Also, I have the shovel here. This was kind of mounted in a way, I put these uh, quick fists on here before I had the high lift. So it was mounted in a different orientation, uh, but it didn't fit with this here because this interfered. So I kind of reworked the setup, setup with this Velcro strap to work with the quick fist. So I might change that setup at some point in the future, but I'll show that. These are just drilled through uh, the tower and that's the whole system, man. That's, that's the whole system on top. And now the beauty of a Diamondback truck, truck cover 
isn't just for all the stuff you can mount on top, though it is a really good solid platform to do whatever you wanna do like I did. I really adapted the truck cover to be more than just a cover, more than just a hardcore tonneau cover, but as a whole system. So as you can imagine, well, maybe you know, maybe you don't know. This is the only tonneau cover that you can do this kind of stuff to. It's the only beefy tonneau cover that will allow you to actually use this like I'm using it, which is awesome for overlanding. But originally I got my Diamondback cover not having overlanding in mind at all. I just wanted a secure place to store stuff. So with all this stuff mounted on top, the Diamondback cover doesn't function in the way the Diamondback cover normally functions. Normally without this stuff on top, these panels can lift up and angle up. I have a whole review of the Diamondback cover on my channel if you're interested in just like how the Diamondback cover works normally. With all this stuff on top, it's just basically a solid cover that can't lift up, obviously, as you can, as you can see, it can't lift up because it's got all this stuff bolted to it. Normally it can, but the beauty of that is this is not my normal setup. I don't normally have all this stuff on it. So when all this stuff is taken off, the Diamondback cover works like it's intended to, basically allows it to fold up and down. Um, but like this is just super solid. And the reason I love tonneau covers and the reason I love this whole setup is I don't really like dirt and dust and water and Colorado's kind of crazy and the trails are oftentimes dusty. And once you get into the mountains, the weather's kind of unpredictable. So I might be driving up on a sunny day and driving down when it's dumping rain. And the stuff I put back in here, maybe pillows, maybe sleeping bags, maybe food, maybe whatever I'm putting in the back, I don't necessarily want it to be completely exposed to the elements. That's where the strengths of a tonneau cover comes in. Also, if I'm going somewhere, you know, if I, if I needed to go to the grocery store to pick up some, some drinks or something before we head up, anything back in under here is completely safe from from theft so if i have my you know seven thousand dollar yeti cooler back in here or my really nice something camping chair somebody can't just walk by the grocery store and steal that real quick because it's all locked in the back which is relatively important for me i like secure storage because oftentimes i'll go camping with expensive stuff maybe i'll bring my bow maybe i'll bring some guns maybe i'll do this or that and maybe the back seat's full with my dog or friends or whatever so having a secure place to keep all of my other gear when I run into Walmart or maybe I am, you know, going to hit a trailhead and I'm going to hike before I camp, I don't like my bed being open. And that's, that's something that's kind of, I don't feel like it should be specific to me, but it's an area that I really feel is lacking in overlanding truck setups. They just have these open beds with all kinds of valuable items back there. And I kind of wonder to myself, like, yeah, these are cool for taking pictures of, but like, what, what do you, what are you doing when you're at a store with all that stuff in the back? I guess they got to leave somebody in the truck while they go in. I, I don't know, but it sounds like a lot of work and I didn't like it. So that's kind of another huge, huge, huge benefit to me of the Diamondback setup. Now let's go inside here. Now inside, I actually have this Rotopax out because I just dumped the gas into my truck so in the back i have some stuff that i don't need access to very often i have the rotopax mount back there so oftentimes i'll just fill up fuel on the way to the trail and i'm never out of fuel like i said before i'm not really overlanding from like alaska to south america where i go long stretches without fuel i'm pretty much always so this is more this is more an emergency item for if other people run out of fuel like in my day-to-day -day, or if i'm caught in like a winter snowstorm so this isn't really even for me it's not even overland specific i keep it mounted away i don't need to show it off like a lot of other overlanders it's just it's an emergency thing that i never touch so i keep it in the very back of my bed here also, what I don't use often is my axe. And this, the axe, I don't really like mounting an axe exterior. There's a, there's a lot of places I can mount the axe out here, but it's just like, I don't know. I don't want some random person to grab the axe off my truck and use it. So it's another item I don't use often. I, I bring like a little hatchet with me when I camp. Um, so I have that up there tucked back away where if I need it, I can get to it relatively easy. Now what you may be seeing up here is something that's totally unique. And that is the Diamondback truck cover 
uses these beams here that go across and give support. That's why you can mount, literally, you can drive an ATV up and park it on top of this thing. Obviously not with my setup, but that's what kind of these things are famous for. You're able to carry 1,600 pounds of stuff up top. What that means is there's these crossbars. Inside of these crossbars, and it's kind of hard to show, there's a bunch of kind of wasted space. So the diamond back cover sits up high and flush, so you get the full height of the bed. But up in here, there's kind of what I saw as wasted space, and I love to maximize space. So what I did here was put some little things, and I'll go into this in more detail in the longer video, but I put some little things, little cargo nets, so now I have a chair up in here all the time, tucked away. And this side I have another net, and what I got in here is a, what is it? It's a down jacket, and this is a shell and some other stuff. So it's just stuff that, you know, normally, it's tucked up high, completely out of the way. Um, and they're kind of, they're compact items, but they would be kind of bulky to put anywhere else. What that means is I can kind of have some emergency items if I forget to bring a jacket or if somebody else forgets to bring a jacket and still have the bed completely, completely open, which is what I really like. Everything else back here is pretty standard. I do have the Total Chaos Bed Stiffeners which I hear is pretty important on Tacomas, especially when you're carrying a bunch of weight on top. So these have a bunch of other tie down points. I'll talk more to them in a separate video, but they're basically to add rigidity to the bed, not for performance modifications or anything like that, just so your bed doesn't collapse or bow outward when you're off, off roading or when you have a big load on top. Whew. All right, well the short video actually ended up being pretty long, I think, because uh, even though I didn't dive deep into the details, there's a lot to go over on a, a seemingly basic uh, bed setup, I guess, right? So anyways, again, if you like this video, if you want to find out more, if you like the Tacoma, if you like me, if you like the channel, get subscribed. Hit that thumbs up button if you're excited about what's to come, if you thought this video was good, informative, helpful, any of those things. Um, do hit that notification icon definitely again if you're thinking about picking one of these up i can highly recommend it but furthermore you want to hit that notification icon so you can get notified when i do drop the video uh the full in-depth video on this where i should have more details on on my secret coupon code all right guys that's it for now as always comment down below let me know if you have questions or anything like that the links for all of this stuff will be down below some of them are affiliate links so what that means if you don't know what that means is that I get a small percentage of the sale if you buy something with one of my links. It costs you literally no more. It's easy, it's right there for you, and it helps me put out absolutely free videos for you guys. So I definitely appreciate you using those links below. I always have links in all my videos to all my stuff, uh, and I do have coupon codes down there as often as I have them, so scroll to the bottom of my video descriptions if you're ever looking for coupon codes. That's where I'll keep my ongoing coupon codes that I've developed relationships with different companies that have given me codes for you guys, so that's beneficial. All right, guys, take care.